Hello students, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I would like to take a look at one of our practice problems from chapter six, motion in two dimensions. It's over projectile motion. So what I'm going to do is solve this problem with you. So I will read the question. I will underline important information. We can draw a diagram, record some knowns and unknowns, and then I will work the problem with you. So let's go ahead and get started. A basketball player is trying to make a half-court jump shot and releases the ball at a height of the basket. Assuming that the ball is launched at 51 degrees, 14 meters from the basket, what velocity must the player give the ball? So the first thing we need to do is draw a picture. So we know that the basketball player shoots the basketball at 51 degrees. So our angle with respect to the x-axis, angle theta, 51 degrees. Let's go ahead and label the initial velocity. Now we don't know what the initial velocity is, that's what we're required to calculate, but we do know that the range is equal to 14 meters. Now we also know that right here, our initial height y sub i is equal to zero meters. And we know that the time, just as the player releases the ball, is zero seconds, okay? Now, the player shoots the ball, and at the same height that the player let go the ball or shot the ball, that's the height of the basket. So, y sub f, the final position in the y direction is equal to zero meters. And delta t over here, this is unknown. We do not know what delta t is, okay? So the first thing that we can do is we can use vector resolution to break down the initial velocity vector into its x and its y components. We know that the velocity in the x direction is equal to the initial velocity times cosine of the angle theta, okay? Now, we don't know initial velocity, but cosine of 51 degrees, we can calculate that. So go ahead and get out your calculator. So cosine 51 degrees, and make sure that your calculator is in degree mode, not radian mode. So, in degree mode, cosine 51 degrees, we have initial velocity times 0 0.629, okay? Now, what I would like to do is I would like to put the numerical value in front of the variable, okay? So, the velocity in the x direction is equal to, so I'm going to put the numerical value in front, 0 0.629 times initial velocity, okay? So I'm going to put a dotted box around this because we're going to need to come back to this. We can also calculate the velocity in the y direction. This is initial velocity times sine of the angle theta. So we have initial velocity times sine of 51 degrees, okay? And we can make a prediction that since the angle theta, this value is greater than 45 degrees, the value of sine 51 should be greater than cosine of 51 degrees. So sine 51, we get 0 0.777. So initial velocity times 0 0.777. Once again here, I am going to move the numerical value in front of our variable initial velocity, so d sub y is equal to 0 0.777 times initial velocity. And once again, I'm going to put a dotted box around this guy, okay? Next, we need to use a, an equation that will give us the position in the y direction for every time t. So, we have The final position in the y direction is equal to 
the initial position in the y direction multiplied by the initial velocity in the y direction multiplied by delta t plus one half times the object's acceleration and we know the acceleration in the y direction is the acceleration due to gravity identified by lowercase g multiplied by delta t squared okay now let's go ahead and plug in some values you already know that the final position in the y direction is zero meters okay so zero meters is equal to zero meters our initial position in the y direction right here plus our initial velocity in the y direction well we don't know the numerical value yet but we do know that the velocity in the y direction is equal to 0.777 times initial velocity so 0.777 times initial velocity multiplied by delta t plus one half times the acceleration due to gravity this is negative 9.8 meters per second squared multiplied by delta t squared okay now just for simplicity's sake here this zero meters on the right hand side of the equal sign I'm just going to get rid of that okay we don't need to worry about it so on the left hand side of the equal sign I have zero so zero is equal to and what I want to do is I want to multiply one half and negative 9.8 meters per second squared that's going to give me negative 4.9 meters per second squared and if you notice I have a delta t right here on both of these and I would like to factor out a delta t so what we have is I'm going to use my hard brackets here 0 0.777 times initial velocity minus 4.9 meters per second squared delta t multiplied by delta t this is the delta t that we factored out so we had one delta t here we're factoring that out we had delta t squared here we're factoring one of the delta t's out okay so what i want to do now is split this up we know that this is a quadratic and I'm going to use the zero product property to set both of these equal to zero. So let's split this guy up. So delta t equal to zero. Okay, so that's one of our possible answers. And we know that this is okay because right, right here, our initial time, just when the basketball player releases the ball is zero. So that's good. Now we're going to set this expression equal to zero and solve for delta t. So what I have is 0 0.777 times initial velocity minus 4.9 meters per second squared times delta t is equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is subtract 0.777 e sub i from both sides of the equal sign and then divide by a negative 4.9 meters per second squared okay so that's going to give me delta t is equal to a negative 0 0.777 times initial velocity divided by negative 4.9 meters per second squared okay so let's grab our calculator now we know our negatives are going to cancel out. We have a negative in the numerator and a negative in the denominator. So those will go ahead and cancel. So I have 0.777 divided by 4.9. And this is going to give me 0 0.158 times V sub I. Okay. I'm going to put a dotted box around this guy because we're going to need it. Next, uh, for the x component, we know that the range is equal to 
the velocity in the x direction multiplied by delta t. Now we know what the range is, the range of the basketball. So this is the displacement in the x direction. We have 14 meters. This is equal to velocity in the x direction. Well, earlier we saw for velocity in the x direction at 0 0.629 multiplied by the initial velocity of the basketball. So 0 0.629 times the initial velocity of the basketball multiplied by our time interval. Okay? So what we're going to do is isolate delta t here by dividing by 0.629 times initial velocity on both sides of the equal sign. And I'm going to erase this right up here just to give us a little bit more room. So I have delta T is equal to 14 meters divided by 0 0.629 times initial velocity. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do the division here. And this gives me 22.25. So delta T is equal to 22.25. And we have units of meters divided by our initial velocity. So I'm going to put a dotted box around this guy. And... Uh, I did skip over the units right here. Our units for 0 0.158 are going to be seconds squared per meter. So, sorry about that. Let's go ahead and put those in there. That second squared per meter times initial velocity. Okay? So, right now we know that delta t is equal to 22.25 meters divided by initial velocity we're going to plug that in right here and then we're going to solve for initial velocity so what i'm going to do is i'm going to erase all of this to free up some room so we're going to plug this in for delta t so I have 22.25 meters divided by the initial velocity of the basketball is equal to 0 0.158 seconds squared per meter times initial velocity. Okay, so what I'm going to do here uh, is multiply by initial velocity on both sides of the equal sign. So V sub I times V sub I. So I have an initial velocity in my numerator here and one in my denominator, so this will cancel. This gives me 22.25 meters is equal to 0 0.158 seconds squared per meter multiplied by initial velocity squared. Okay, now we're going to want to isolate initial velocity. So we're going to first divide by 0.158 seconds squared per meter on both sides of the equal sign. So this cancels here. So I have initial velocity squared is equal to this. Let's go ahead and do our division here. So 22.25 divided by 0.158 is going to be 140.82. And so now we need to take a look at our units. So what we have is meters over one divided by second squared over meters. Now remember the old algebra rule that whenever we divide fractions, it's like multiplying by the inverse of the denominator. So we have meters over one times the inverse of the denominator, meters per second squared. This gives us meters squared per second squared, okay? And I have initial velocity squared on the 
right side here, so let's go ahead and take the square root of both sides so we can eliminate that square. So taking the square root here, I get 11.87. So initial velocity equals 11.87. And not only are we taking the square root of the numerical value, we're also taking the square root of the unit value. So the square root of meters squared per second squared, that's just meters per second. Now, since this is velocity, we must include direction. So the direction is 51 degrees. So the basketball player shoots the basketball at 11.87 meters per second at 51 degrees. And that is our answer. Okay, well, I, I hope me working through the problem has helped you with the practice problems today. If you have any questions, please give me a call or send me an email. I hope you have a great day.